Jay, I hope I don't create too much noise. Maybe I ought to take a little time. I was falling apart coming up here. and <laughs> Debbie, I had to say, y'all probably was looking at me asking Debbie to check me out in the back, and that probably didn't look good, <laughs> you know. But uh, I kind of went to grab hold of my coat, and my whole hands got wet, and it was sanitizer. And I guess when I was talking to J.R. back there, I backed up against that automatic, uh, sand, and it was a pshht, 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 pshht. It was letting me have it. Uh, so I'll tell you what, you have a preacher that is sanitized. <laughs> Amen. I've been to the fountain, praise God. Uh, it is good to be here tonight, and it's good to see each one of you uh, that's assembled together uh, with us. And, uh, you know, I'm, and I appreciate those by Facebook that has uh, tuned us in as well. This is a special uh, service that we have. Uh, you know, the Thursday before Jesus was crucified, uh, he was in that upper room with his disciples. Uh, and, you know, a few years ago, of course, COVID knocked us out two years uh, of getting to do this. We moved our prayer meeting to that Thursday night uh, before Good Friday uh, so that we could just get that mood of what happened uh, and what Jesus did and what he accomplished and the messages uh, that he was making to his disciples. Uh, Jesus didn't just do things, Charlie, just to be filling in space. Uh, uh, you know, I've got a little bit of time before I die, so let's, let's go do this. Uh, everything was detailed. Of course, uh, you know, the uh, supper in the upper room was the Passover meal. And this is something that the Jewish people had kept uh, uh, for a, a few thousand years. Uh, and so we want to look at that tonight. Uh, and I thank God that we have uh, an opportunity tonight to assemble together. And we've got a good number tonight uh, uh, for this service. And I thank God for your uh, being here with us. And again, those that's joined in uh, by Facebook, we will, we will take you up to the point that we get ready to have the communion itself, and then we'll be cutting away from Facebook. Uh, uh, but I pray that uh, you always have an opportunity uh, throughout the year to participate uh, in uh, the communion service. Jesus said, as oft as you do this. Uh, you know, we're doing it in remembrance of what He did. Uh, and thank God for what He did. Amen. There would be no hope if it had not been uh, for Jesus going to the cross. Uh, I want you to turn together with us to St. John chapter 1 uh, and verse 29 and stand together when you find that uh, in St. John uh, chapter 1 and verse 29. <clears throat> Anytime I read this verse, I get excited about just uh, preaching on, on the uh, subject matter. When John the Baptist saw the Lamb of God, and he recognized Him as the Lamb of God, he had asked his heavenly Father, please show me who He is, who the Anointed One is, who the Messiah is, who the Christ is, and all those being the same thing. And when he baptized Jesus, God had plainly made it clear to John, in whom you see the Spirit light upon and remain upon, that's Him. Amen. And when He saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove uh, uh, settled down upon the Lord Jesus Christ, He knew beyond any shadow of a doubt, this is the Lamb of God. And the next day when He saw Him and a couple of His disciples with Him, uh, He made this statement here in John uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 29. The Bible said, The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank God. That's what the Paschal Lamb was all about. Charlie, every lamb that had been slain all those years down through time represented the Lamb of God that was now sitting in the midst of His disciples on this Thursday night before Good Friday. Amen. He was the Lamb, the pure Lamb, the sinless Lamb that had no spot, no blemish in His life. And He bore our sins to the cross of Calvary. I'm going to heaven tonight because of what He did. Not what, not what Herman did, but what he did. Oh, I'm so thankful for, you know, I love Easter time. Amen. The resurrection, a celebration of the resurrection. Let us bow our heads as we look to the Lord in prayer. This is a moment we ask you to pray for us as we stand in your presence tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, 
for the good spirit that has already been here in your house. Uh, Lord, uh, during the anointing and the prayer time, uh, Father, just to feel the moving of the Spirit of God here in our midst. Uh, Lord, just coming into the house of God uh, and greeting our brothers and sisters. Uh, and Lord, just feeling that connection uh, uh, with the Spirit of God. We're so thankful. Uh, you're better to us than we're ever deserving of. Uh, we thank you uh, uh, for how good... Uh, uh, that you have been to us, Lord. Uh, at times when we have failed you and we have come short uh, of the glory of God, uh, to have your love uh, uh, to reach out. And Lord, sometimes that love has been in reproof and rebuke. Uh, we welcome that as well. Lord, if we didn't have that, uh, uh, well, we would just go astray. Uh, but Lord God, we stay on that path because you love us uh, enough to tell us when we're wrong. Uh, so Lord, I pray tonight, God, bless uh, uh, this service tonight. Fill it with the Spirit uh, and will not fail to give you praise and glory for it's all in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. And you can be seated tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. John said, uh, the next day, this is after the baptism of Jesus, uh, uh, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, thank God, Bill, uh, uh, my sins... Uh, have been taken care of uh, uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, I have not been perfect, have you? But I'm glad that when I take my faults and my failures uh, to the cross of Calvary, uh, the blood uh, uh, will cover those. Uh, amen. When we confess our sins, He said He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us uh, from all unrighteousness. Uh, now, you know what? I believe you need to ask. He said, if we confess. Now, this stuff of uh, uh, Jesus died for our future sins, you can sin, do whatever you want to. Uh, uh, it's all taken care of. You never have to ask Him again to forgive you. Uh, that's not what the Word teaches. Uh, amen. Uh, if you'll confess... He said, I will forgive. And I not only forgive, I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I am so thankful for that. Well, you know, this is the Thursday before Good Friday. So let's just kind of walk back in time. And you know, we, we're going to end up in the upper room with the disciples and the Lord Himself. But I want us to go way back beyond that. We're going to do a little time travel tonight. Amen. And we're going to go all the way back. And listen, I invite you at home and I invite you here uh, when you go home uh, to read Exodus chapter 12. Uh, amen. Pin that down and go home and read Exodus chapter 12 uh, because Moses gives the children of Israel uh, the description of uh, uh, what God wants them to do in preparing uh, for the night of the Passover. Uh, and folks, let me tell you, Passover uh, uh, is in reference to what the angel did uh, uh, that night. Uh, that angel was going to go through Egypt's land uh, because because the children of Israel, the Hebrew children, they had been in bondage now for over 400 years. And God sent Moses down into Egypt and told Pharaoh, let my people go. Amen. And so we're looking at Passover. This angel passed over after midnight and he looked. Listen, he didn't look inside the house to see who all was in there. He didn't look inside that house and see who was worthy and unworthy. He looked for the blood on the outside of the doorpost. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Uh, folks, he's looking for the blood. He's not looking for how often you go to church. He's not looking for how much money you give to the church. He's not looking for how big of a house and car you have. He's looking for the blood. Has it been applied uh, to your heart? Amen. And if the blood hasn't been applied, you're not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven because you're a good person. You're not going to heaven because you take care of your family and you make sure they're provided for. Those are good things. They're wonderful. But my friend, there's only one thing that's going to get you into heaven, and that is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the importance of this blood tonight, the importance of this lamb that we're talking about. You know, when John said, Behold the Lamb of God, the children of Israel knew exactly what that statement was in reference. 
reference to. It was in reference to the Paschal Lamb. Amen. The Lamb that, uh, you know, was the sacrifice for their sins. And many might have scratched their heads. Uh, Jesus is called the, uh, the Paschal Lamb. Uh, he was the one to come and to die. Now they looked for Him to come and to rule and reign. Uh, but He come to be our Savior. Uh, amen. To go to the cross of Calvary uh, and to pay the ultimate price. Uh, no greater love, Bill, could anyone show uh, than what Jesus did in laying down His life. And not only laying it down, uh, but my friend, uh, He freely gave His life. Uh, I like what you said, Bill, uh, uh, in the opening of prayer tonight. Uh, and, and I'll make just a little reference to that. Uh, uh, when Bill talked about uh, uh, how that he prayed uh, and said, Father, uh, is there any way, uh, uh, you know, that this cup could pass from me? Uh, Bill, I do, uh, uh, you know, I do look at that uh, and I do ponder on that. Uh, you see, he was wanting God's permission uh, uh, to be able uh, uh, to move around the suffering uh, uh, that he was going to endure in the flesh. Uh, but in reality, uh, he had the power. Uh, did he not tell uh, uh, Simon Peter, put that sword away? Do you not know I can call for 12 legions of angels and they would come and bear me up. He knew that he could call for them, but he would not call without the permission of his heavenly Father. And he knew the will of the Father was to die for Stuart Orr and to die for Randy Felty and to die, praise God, for you, Edith and Kim. Thank God he knew the will of the Father and therefore for it was let not my will be done but your will be done amen so let's go back into the time that God was preparing the children of Israel for their escape out of Egypt amen uh, you know they were getting ready for an exit that's why we got the term exodus uh, for the book of exodus it talks about uh, the children of Israel and their exit out of Egypt land Sharon there's coming a day of exit for you and I. Amen. Uh, we're going to have another great exodus uh, uh, to take place. Uh, and you know what? We're going out of here because of the same thing. Uh, it was the blood on the doorpost then uh, uh, that brought them out of Egypt. Uh, and it's the blood uh, on my heart. Uh, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. That's going to take me out of here uh, uh, one day uh, uh, after a while. Uh, well, I want us to look at the choosing of the Paschal Lamb. God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, I want you to go and choose out of the flock a lamb that is a yearling, a lamb that is not a year old. I want you to go get that lamb, and I want you to put that lamb aside for four days. And I want you to look that lamb over. And I want that lamb to be without spot and to be without blemish. It is not to have anything whatsoever if they saw that lamb leaping uh, uh, during the four days, they put it back. They would try to get another lamb uh, uh, for the Passover. It had to be a lamb that was pure. Why? Because it represented Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Now, there's people today that talks about, oh, well, you know, Jesus sinned. Uh, no, He did not. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus said things uh, uh, that was wrong. No, there was no gall in His mouth. Uh, amen. He was sinless. Uh, amen. He was pure and perfect. Uh, and that lamb represented uh, the Lamb of God that was to take away uh, uh, the sins of the world. No wonder John uh, uh, looked at Jesus. I'm talking about the Baptist. Uh, looked at Jesus and said, I don't need to be baptizing you. Uh, I need to be baptized of you. Uh, amen. Uh, he knew and saw how pure and holy uh, uh, that Jesus was. Uh, uh, folks, I want you to know uh, uh, he said, go and you get a yearling uh, uh, out. I want you to get that young lamb. Uh, I want you to make sure it's spotless. Uh, I want you to examine it for four days uh, uh, and then when you see that it's uh, spotless uh, then I want you to take that lamb on the day uh, of Passover uh, and I want you to take now folks I'm going to tell you a little something uh, uh, how the Jewish people had to do this uh, the head of the house uh, had to take a blade uh, and they had to pull back that lamb's head uh, and they had to put that blade up under its throat uh, and they had to slice uh, uh, that lamb's throat uh, and brother the blood would gush out uh, uh, into 
to a pen. Uh, why was it some member of the family? Uh, it represented why that lamb had to die. That lamb had to die for the sins of that family. Uh, amen. Uh, although we know in the New Testament uh, the blood of bullocks and goats and all these things cannot obtain, cannot uh, uh, cleanse us, cannot uh, take away our sins. Uh, amen. Uh, it took the blood uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, every year it was lamb after lamb after lamb uh, until you get to the book of Hebrews and read uh, where it says, and now uh, the lamb, uh, our brother came, uh, and there is no more sacrifice. Uh, amen. That is the sacrifice. Uh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, thank God for what he did. Uh, I know as we prayed here tonight, uh, I thank God not only for the blood that cleanses, uh, uh, but the stripes that was laid on his back. Uh, amen. That's for our healing uh, uh, tonight. Uh, amen. There's so much about the blood. There's power in the blood. Uh, wonder working power. Uh, amen. You gave testimony to your sister, uh, I believe it was. Uh, and you know what? When I look at this thing tonight, it's the power of the blood. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, that does it. Uh, amen. Uh, oh, we, we continue to pray. We continue to look uh, uh, to the Lamb of God. Uh, you know, there was something they did also during that time, Bill. They would cleanse their house from all unleavened, or all leaven, and they had unleavened bread, and they had a feast of that unleavened bread. You know, that was the first thing. They would feast and celebrate that bread. You know, when it comes to the Lord's Supper, the bread was the first thing Jesus blessed. Amen. Because His body was given before the blood was. Amen. His body was an example for you and I. He is a perfect high priest that's been tempted in every manner and way that we could have, we can never look at Jesus and say you don't understand you don't know what I'm going through he knows more about what you're going through than you ever will know yourself amen and so when we look at the unleavened bread the bread that had no leaven in it it's like yeast it makes the bread rise so it was flat so it's a wafer and that's why you see the wafer at communion time there's no leaven you know in the wafer and leaven has represented sin in the word of God and Charlie, when we look, we see a way for the bread that had no sin in it. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says the bread of life came from heaven. Amen. He is our manna, praise God. Came from heaven without sin. I'm glad, praise the name of the Lord, that we serve a Savior that is sinless. Amen. And so they had the celebration of the unleavened bread. And the Jewish people would clean their house if they found any leaven during the, the Passover time, they would be marked as unclean. They had to make sure it was cleansed out. I believe we need to have a little uh, uh, cleansing. Amen. And sometimes we need to, you know, they talk about Lent and so forth. Folks, we need to really literally get the sin out of our lives. Amen. So that little lamb was killed by the head of the household. Amen. They would slice its throat and, and they would uh, obtain that blood. Now there was a reason for that blood. That blood had to be put on the doorpost on both sides. Amen. And then it had to be put overhead. Boy, you see the cross already, don't you? Amen. Uh, folks, uh, I want you to know they, the angel was going to see that. Now I'll tell you what, the angel didn't have to put his speckles on and say, I wonder where the blood is. He knew exactly where to see the blood. Amen. If it was on the windows, it wouldn't have done a bit of good. If it was on, uh, you know, the chimney, it wouldn't have done a bit of good. Uh, uh, folks, if it was down the pathway uh, going up to the door, it wouldn't have done a bit of good. It had to be on the doorpost uh, and overhead. Uh, amen. That was the only place. And the angel was going to look for that uh, as he passed through. Uh, amen. Uh, God's looking for the blood in my life and your life today. Uh, amen. Uh, and you know, when that Paschal lamb, when they got ready, uh, and they would take and pull back the head of that little lamb uh, and put uh, that blade uh, to its throat. And I know it sounds cruel, uh, uh, but folks, let me tell you, that was done precisely at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, well, preacher, what in the world? Uh, why did they do that? Because God knew exactly when the Lamb of God uh, would die on Calvary's cross. Uh, Jesus hung His head and said, It is finished. Uh, into Thy hands I commend My Spirit. Uh, and that 
was the ninth hour, 3 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. Now, some folks says Jesus manipulated all that to happen. Folks, it would take one of the greatest miracles to manipulate the, the soldiers and everyone else to put you on the cross at the right time and to have you to die at the exact time that the Paschal Lamb throughout the Old Testament died. Amen. But that little lamb had to end its life at 3 p.m. so that the Paschal meal could be ready. Amen. And then they would take that lamb. And folks, let me tell you, it was a strict order from God. There shall be no bones broken in that lamb. Do not break one bone in that lamb. And folks, you say, well, preacher, how did that match up? Do you remember when they came to the cross and they broke the thieves' legs? By breaking their legs, they couldn't push up and the carbon would collect in their lungs and they would suffocate and they would die quicker. The Sabbath was drawing nigh. The Passover day was drawing nigh. And they wanted them dead and they wanted them off of the cross. They came to Jesus and found that He was already dead. Amen? So they didn't have to break His bones. Isn't that great? God knew exactly how to keep His Word fulfilled. Amen? It came to pass just as God said that it would. And so He told the children of Israel, He said, you take that lamb and I want you to take, listen, He said, all of it's to be eaten. Every bit of it's to be eaten. And if you do not have enough in your family to eat that lamb completely, Completely, uh, then you share with someone else. Uh, you bring in uh, another small family uh, and you get that family together uh, because every bit of it has to be eaten uh, and none of it is to be taken outdoors. Uh, it is to stay right there uh, in the house. Uh, you know what God meant? Eat the Passover. Stay in your house. Uh, amen. Do not exit. Uh, uh, you know, you don't go outside eating a little lamb chop and, and saying, well, you know, it's good weather. He said, stay inside uh, and you eat inside. God knew that there was a swiftness in them leaving the land. They had to be ready. And so he said, I don't want you boiling it. I don't want any water in boiling that lamb. That lamb is to be roasted. That lamb is not to be eaten raw. Amen. So some of you that like your, you know, meat raw, let me tell you something. It had to be roasted. Amen. Well done. The way I like things to be. Amen. Well done. And so this lamb uh, was roasted on the fire. The family would begin to eat. They had to consume every bit of it, Charlie. Uh, and they couldn't leave the house. Uh, they had to stay right there uh, and stay there until that lamb was fully eaten. I, you know what? When you take Jesus into your life, Scotty, you take the whole. Uh, amen. You take all of Jesus. Uh, amen. And nothing but the whole truth. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, amen. Uh, you got to take it all in. Uh, there's people trying to choose bits and pieces of, of what they like like about the word. Well, I'll do that and I'll follow that. Uh, amen. If you're following Jesus, you'll follow it all. Amen. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. Uh, amen. Uh, and, and then, folks, we look in the Scriptures and we look in the precious Word of God and we see not only was that lamb to be eaten, uh, uh, but He said, while you're eating that lamb, I want you to be fully clothed. Uh, I want you to be fully clothed. Uh, amen. Ready to journey. Uh, and I want you to have your shoes on, your sandals on. Uh, amen. Have them buckled up. Uh, but He meant for them to be ready to travel. Uh, amen. Uh, are you shoot up and ready to go? Because uh, when's the rapture going to happen? Uh, amen. We don't know, do we? Uh, you know what children of Israel didn't know exactly? They knew it was right upon them, but they didn't know exactly when. Uh, so God said, you don't worry about uh, when. You just be ready. Uh, amen. You, you be fully dressed and ready to journey. They done had the wagons packed. Amen. They were packed and ready to go. Amen. Now they were sitting inside. They had this Passover meal. Amen. And now they're waiting for the rumble. Amen. They're waiting for that angel to come through. And All of a sudden they heard screaming and crying you know, a few blocks down. What was it? A the angel had passed over one of the Egyptian homes and the firstborn in every Egyptian home died and they was wailing and crying and weeping all throughout Egypt's land. Folks, they were ready. Amen. God was getting ready to free Israel from bondage. Amen. He was going to deliver them from slavery. God's going to deliver me from this world of bondage, this sickness, this pain, this suffering that we see 
stay on this side. It's going to end one day real soon. Praise God. Amen. I look for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's move up in time just a little bit. Because Jesus told his disciples where to go. What upper room to choose. Amen. And that things would be prepared. And so they went and they got ready. Well, what were they preparing for? They weren't preparing for this communion that you're seeing here tonight. They prepared the Paschal lamb meal. Amen. And folks, I want you to know, they sat down and they ate that meal. And we all know the story, don't we? How that they began to wonder who was going to betray Jesus. Amen. And they all kind of probed around Stuart and they tried to find the answer. And Jesus wouldn't give them, you know, He wouldn't give them any resolve on it. He wouldn't answer it. So finally they looked over and they saw John. And they said, there's the beloved. He loves him. That's his pet. You know, I know that we go around and it's been Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Well, we all know that John's the big shot. I'm, he, he's the baby of the bunch. Uh, he's the youngest one of us. Uh, and Jesus simply loves him. Uh, tell him to ask. Uh, amen. Have you ever seen older brothers or sisters get the younger one? Go and ask mommy. Do your sisters ever do that? Who's the youngest one? And who's the youngest one of this bunch? Did you put Harriet up to go in the hat and ask? Did they put you up, Kathy, to go in and ask? Sometimes. And they put John up to it. Did John get an answer? <laughs> he looked over at John. He said, John, when I dip the sop, and the very one that I give it to, it's him. It's him. Amen. And so he gave the sop to Judas and said, What thou dost, do quickly. Judas got up and left, and they all kind of started wondering. And, and, and you know, as they pondered on the things, they said, well, he's got the money, and, and Jesus probably, uh, you know, he's gone to get some supplies. Nonetheless, as someone said the other day, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Judas, uh, uh, Jesus kissed Judas, and Jesus washed his feet, uh, and that's a lot of love uh, uh, in one week, uh, and yet he still called him friend. But you know what? If you technically look at it, Judas left before the foot washing. Uh, amen. Uh, he left uh, as he get, received that sop uh, uh, there at the table. Uh, and, and also, it wasn't Jesus who kissed him. It was Judas who kissed Jesus. Uh, amen. To betray him. Uh, uh, so folks, when we look uh, uh, at this, uh, uh, we can see the betrayal that took place uh, uh, on that night. Uh, amen. Uh, and yet he Here's Jesus. He all he begins to institute something different. Now I want you to think about this, Scotty. All the Passover meals that these disciples has had. I don't know how old uh, Simon Peter is, uh, uh, but ever since he was a kid, uh, every Passover uh, year, uh, uh, he would have to eat the Passover lamb. Uh, amen. Uh, this was the last Passover supper uh, that Peter was to have. Uh, amen. Because after this night, uh, it was communion service. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, because Jesus nailed to the cross the ordinances uh, of the old Paschal way. Uh, amen. Uh, and became a, a new order of things. Jesus sat down and He said, He took bread and He broke that bread and He blessed that bread and He said, take and eat. This is my body. Amen. So we're getting the institution of a new supper. Amen. Something that had never been done before. It was a, a, a a puzzlement to uh, uh, the disciples. Uh, and, and they listened and they ate the bread. Uh, and then Jesus took uh, the fruit of the vine uh, and He poured it in a cup. Uh, and He said, this represents my blood. Take and drink it. Uh, and they drunk uh, uh, from the cup. Uh, representing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to take in His body. We need to take in the blood of what He's done uh, uh, for us. Uh, it's all symbolical, but praise God for the power of the symbolism uh, of the communion. Communion. Amen. And so uh, the communion was instituted that night, the first night. And from that time on, uh, throughout Christendom, we have been keeping uh, of the communion. And, and if you're not uh, somewhere where your church does communion, uh, oh my goodness, you need to get somewhere where they do. Amen. Uh, then uh, uh, Jesus, when He finished uh, uh, breaking the bread and giving them the fruit of the vine, He walked over and He picked up a towel. And he wrapped it around himself and he girded himself, tied it to himself. And he got a pan of water and he put water in that uh, basin. And he carried it over to his first disciple. 
And he began to wash their feet. Well, they'd never seen anything like this. Now, if they had seen this before, they would have, they would have had no uh, question about it. And you'd never had Peter saying, Lord, you're not washing my feet. He would have said, well, Lord, this is an honor and a privilege. We've done this every year. No, it was something brand new. He didn't fully understand it. As a matter of fact, Jesus told him, He said, you don't understand what you're doing now, but you will later. He said, you call me Master and Lord, and if I, your Master and Lord, have washed your feet, then you ought to wash one another's feet. What does that show? The Bible said that they all knew that Jesus, by girding Himself, was taking upon Himself a servant. He was the Master. How could He be servant? And that's where Jesus had a golden opportunity. He said, if I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet. In other words, I, your Lord and Master, have become your servant. You shall be servants one to another. You know, when you participate in a foot washing, uh, uh, you're simply saying, you're not washing somebody's feet because they're dirty. Uh, uh, you know, you're saying to that person, uh, I am here for you. And not only that person that you bowed down to, uh, uh, my friend, you're saying to the whole body of Christ, you're saying to the whole church, uh, if there's anything I can do, I'm there for you. And I believe we've got a church full of people uh, uh, that honestly would do that very thing. Uh, amen. So when I look at John 13, uh, I see a second part of that uh, communion that night between Jesus and His disciples, and I don't want to erase that either. You know why? Jesus said, I think along about verse 17, happy are you if you do these things. <laughs> I want to be happy. Don't you tonight? I want to be happy. Again, we appreciate those of you that's joined in with us tonight. Uh, we're getting ready to go into our communion service, and I pray that you've enjoyed just a little walk through the Old Testament and, and seeing all that uh, that Lamb represented and how pure and holy that Lamb was. And the sins were put upon that Lamb. Well, the sins was put upon the true Lamb of God. And I'm glad that the sacrificing stopped after Jesus gave His life. That was a sufficient sacrifice. That was the sacrifice that was to come. Amen, and I am thankful for that. Let's just stand for a moment here. We want to pray, and I want to say to those that are, that are listening in, if you're not right with God, get right. Do more than go to church. Do more than just say a kind thing here and there. Have Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life. Preacher, what are you talking about? If you've never ever said, Jesus, I'm lost. Without the blood, I know I'd go to hell. I'm asking you to become my Lord and my Savior right now. Preacher, I ain't ever done that. If you've never done that, then you're not saved. If you're here tonight and you've never done that, you're not saved. It takes the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not Herman religion. That's salvation, friends. We've got to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. And those that might be listening by Facebook, if you're not saved, all it takes is a simple prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. Please come into my heart. Please save me. Please wash away my sins. This preacher said if I would confess my sins, that you would be faithful and just to forgive. I just didn't say that. Saint, or 1 John chapter 1 and start about verse 8. It says that. Amen? So let us pray together. Father, if there be that one that's listening, I pray, Lord God, that You will deal with their precious heart. And Lord, may they make that confession. May they ask You into their heart and into their life. May they ask You, dear Lord God, uh, by accepting the blood and what You did at Calvary. This is the Holy Week. This is the Passion Week. Uh, and, and Lord, all that You did, You did for every one of us. Lord, there's not a one listening to me that can say, but He didn't do it for me. You did it for everyone. For whosoever, whosoever, that covers everybody. And Lord, I pray, may someone call upon You right now. May someone get things right with You at this very moment. And Lord God, they'll have the best Easter that they'll ever have if they will get things right with You. And Lord, if one prays and one asks You into their heart, Help them to confess that. Help them to, to get on Facebook and say, man, I was watching a service tonight and I asked Jesus into my heart and into my life. Let them do that. For with, conf with the mouth, confession is made. Uh, so Lord, help them to do that. Uh, and then Lord, bless the furtherance of our service. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You and he took bread and gave thanks and break it 
and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet? Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord? And ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them.